I want to turn to Angus King. He is a member of the Armed Services and Budget Committee and the U.S. Select Committee on Intelligence. Senator, uh, thank you for joining us. Appreciate your being with us. I want to ask you this. With that rally there and a lot of uh, angered words that we've heard from uh, Senator Cruz and Donald Trump, is there any hope for Republicans as far as derailing this deal? I don't think so. It appears that the votes are there to uh, prevent passage in the Senate. Uh, and there's certainly the votes are there to sustain a veto. I frankly hope that uh, the, the, the resolution of disapproval fails uh, in the Senate. I think that's a better message than uh, sustaining a veto. But either way, it appears that the uh, agreement is going to go through. I wish I could be as sure as those guys. Uh, this is a very difficult question of weighing risks. And I concluded that the risks uh, of not going forward with the deal far outweigh, uh, outweigh the risks of going forward with a deal that basically has been approved by the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you also, Hillary Clinton, uh, with her tough, tough talk earlier today, speaking out in favor of the deal, uh, let's listen to what she had to say earlier. Sadly, that is becoming rarer and rarer in today's Congress. So to every Democratic senator, they are facing a choice. Okay, that's Ted Cruz as he spoke out earlier. That didn't uh, sound like Hillary. To no, me. no, no. That was that was Ted Cruz uh, as we were watching video earlier of Donald Trump. As you heard him say, you know, I'm, I'm one of the best negotiators out there. I've done many deals. This is the worst deal, uh, sign of incompetence that he's seen. Uh, paraphrasing that. Um, what about Donald Trump? Uh, a lot of people saw this as possibly an opportunity to talk about it. Maybe uh, you know, see his take on foreign policy. Do you agree with Donald Trump here, and that this is the worst? deal, especially as we're asking how he's viewed uh, on his foreign policy issues? Well, it's not a perfect deal. It's a negotiated agreement. I've negotiated deals myself, and I've never seen one that is exactly what I would have wanted. Uh, there are plenty of flaws in it, but the real question that you have to ask is, what's the alternative? What do you do if we reject this deal? And the alternative, unfortunately, is that the rest of the world, our partners in this negotiation, have already indicated pretty strongly that if we walk, this, the sanctions regime, which brought Iran to the table, is going to erode. It's going to get weaker. And I don't understand why anybody thinks Iran's going to come back to the table, make more concessions, if, in fact, the sanctions are weaker. I mean, that's the real question. It's not, is this a perfect deal? I don't think anybody here is arguing that it is, although it does have some very strong provisions, somewhat stronger than I expected, frankly. 98 percent reduction mm -hmm. in Iran's uh, uh, enriched nuclear material, two-thirds uh, uh, reduction in their centrifuges. So there are very strong provisions. But the real question is, OK, compared to what? If we reject it, what happens then? And I think that's the question that the opponents, frankly, have just never answered. Well, we've heard from Hillary Clinton said that, you know what, if it is necessary, military action will be taken against them. Uh, she spoke about that early. Now we have that sound. Let's listen. Sure. The United States will never allow you to acquire a nuclear weapon. As president, I will take whatever actions are necessary to protect the United States and our allies. I will not hesitate to take military action. Are you with Hillary Clinton without agreeing that you'll take whatever military action is necessary? I think that has to be what's on the table. And I think one of the important ways to look at this whole arrangement is it essentially takes, puts uh, Iran out of the nuclear weapons business for at least 15 years. At the end of 15 years, we still have the same options that we have today. And I think a president has to state uh, that those options are on the table. I think Iran has to understand that and believe it. But uh, in the meantime, if we have a 15-year period where we realize they, can, they are out of the nuclear weapons business, mm -hmm. let's take advantage of that. And then we have the same options that we have now, more sanctions or a military option in 15 years. But uh, a lot can happen in that period of time. And that's why people like Colin Powell and uh, Madeleine Albright and many others who know a lot mm -hmm. about foreign policy, and George Mitchell, I might mention, from Maine, who is also something of a negotiator, uh, have endorsed this deal. All right. Uh, Senator Angus King, thank you very much. Uh, just updating you now as this